from Kubo, Dennis van Leider. Dennis, good morning to you. Andrew, good morning to you. And on the line we have uh, Yuki Mori from Dyson in Japan. Good evening to you, Yuki. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Andrew. We'll come and speak to you in just a second, but firstly to mm -hmm. uh, Dennis. We're talking about having less impact yep. and healthy food. Uh, what is the topic of our, of our session here right now? What are we talking about and why? Why? Why we talk about uh, food safety? One of the, yeah, let's say, topics at the moment with uh, the current situation of COVID, people are very scared about uh, food quality. Is it uh, polluted? Are there uh, pesticides on it or whatever? So that's why the topic is on the table from yeah, production of vegetables without use of chemical treatment, no pesticides or less at, as less as possible. And, and that, no that comes on top of uh, growing awareness, shall we say, yeah, of yeah, uh, yeah. what's happening in our yeah, food, food you look, supply yeah. chain. We have to look after Mother Nature eh, uh, to take care of the natural sources for the future. Absolutely. We're having uh, quite a few sessions where the focus was really on, you know, this heightened awareness of uh, where food is being produced, vegetables as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the desire, the strong consumer and retail yeah. desire to, uh, to, to be cleaner, fresher, healthier. Yeah. Um, so that's what we want to talk about yeah. right now. And also, you know, what Kubo is doing to contribute towards that. And we said that um, we're going to have a focus on, on Asia. Mm -hmm. Would you like, before we go over to, to Yuki, would you mm -hmm. like to just set the scene for the, uh, for the situation there? The uh, situation is that it is, has been uh, rapidly uh, changing, the demand of the, the people in Asia. Um, what you see is that there is a kind of uh, adaption of the, the European, American style, uh, that the, the people in Asia are looking for uh, fresh vegetables, lettuce, salads, uh, instead of the, let's say, the, the common uh, ingredients they use, well, like rice and noodles. So yeah, that's a huge opportunity for us as Kubo, as a greenhouse builder for vegetables, together with our partner in, in Japan. Yeah, when you're talking particularly about East Asia yeah. in, in yeah. that context. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Yuki, let's bring you in uh, here, if we can, right away. Mm -hmm. Describe mm -hmm. the situation in terms of consumer behaviors in Japan when it comes to fresh, mm -hmm. fresh vegetables, please. Yes, uh, actually, uh, nowadays uh, in Japan, uh, uh, more and more, like uh, Dennis told us, uh, there are more demands uh, for uh, processing uh, foods because uh, uh, also uh, involving uh, Western style uh, say, uh, lunches, uh, dinners. Uh, in recent years, uh, our uh, demands uh, were basically on locals, uh, so our production was basically uh, from regions to regions. But nowadays, there are huge uh, uh, demands uh, everywhere especially in the big cities like Tokyo and in Osaka. Uh, it needs to have uh, a constant and uh, quality and constant uh, amount of uh, uh, vegetables and uh, fruits uh, and, and so on uh, is necessary. And more and more demands uh, towards uh, productivity, uh, uh, thus uh, introduction of uh, uh, Dutch technology uh, greenhouse uh, in Japan is becoming more more and more common. No, excellent. And you're the, uh, if you like, Japanese partner for mm -hmm. Kubo and helping to uh, bring up uh, all kinds of new production technologies uh, for this situation, exactly. Um, but the mm -hmm. Japanese standards when it comes to food quality mm -hmm. are extremely high anyway. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. a burgeoning population, uh, big, big, mm -hmm. big cities. Three quarters of Japan, I believe, is quite mountainous. Yes, uh, you're right. Yeah, so that means that the area for, shall we say, open field uh, food production mm -hmm. is uh, extremely limited. Yes, uh, that is true. And uh, uh, well, when we uh, talk about agriculture, uh, there is, uh, generally uh, speaking, uh, uh, open field uh, type of growing and also a greenhouse uh, type of growing. And uh, against uh, open type of uh, field of growing, uh, greenhouse production is uh, uh, much uh, less. And uh, actually, in that uh, type of uh, greenhouse growing, a climate controlled, uh, like uh, a Dutch technology Venlo type greenhouse, is uh, more or less. But actually, uh, like uh, the, the demands of food uh, st stability, 
and the quality uh, uh, level uh, is more and more demanding, uh, there are more demands of those type of greenhouse to be introduced in Japan. So a potential demand, Dennis, for uh, greenhouses uh, in Japan and other parts of Asia as well. But well, if we're comparing um, greenhouse production to open field production, in terms of obviously land, that's, that's quite obvious, but in terms of resource use, where are the advantages there? I'm thinking water, yeah. fertilizer, pesticides. Yeah, water for sure. Uh, for example, just uh, to give a number, if you want to grow one kilo of tomatoes in the open field, you use more than 200 liters of water. Mm. And if you do that the same in a, in a covered area, in a greenhouse, you go back to only 40 liters. So yeah. that's a huge difference. Yeah. The combination of fertilizers and waters, yeah, that's the same. If you use it in the open field, um, you, you, yeah, you spread it, you use it, and it is gone, and it will never be reused. The technology we use in the greenhouse is that there is a um, drain, it comes back, it is cleaned, disinfected, and can be reused. So, yeah, the waste of water as natural source and the fertilizers is really limited nowadays. And the pesticide uh, is obviously here in Europe a very, very hot topic, uh, mm -hmm. but in Asia as well, yeah. more and more. But I believe that in certain parts of Asia, maybe not Japan so much, but certain parts that pesticides are still uh, quite common. Uh, yeah, it is, let's say, the, we are now changing from the open field to the greenhouse. It is still a common use of pesticides from the past. Uh, but yeah, with the technology of nowadays, with uh, Kubo, with our system, with overpressure, ultraclima, means is that the, the, the incoming pesticides are, is limited because of the overpressure, cannot fly in. We have even uh, the insect nettings to be aware of, let's say, to control the, the input and the output of the air. That means that in that case you don't need, uh, let's say, chemical treatment pesticides to be used in the, in the greenhouse for the crop. So what you can offer the, the public, the consumers, is pesticide-free or let's say, as less as possible. And that's a massive uh, demand, Yuki, in, uh, in mm -hmm. Japan, I assume, as well. Uh, few pesticides. Are pe people are very aware, I assume, mm -hmm. about the use of mm -hmm. pesticides and chemicals? Yes, actually true. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, because uh, for like uh, family-based uh, uh, consumers, uh, a lot of uh, uh, small children, uh, they are eating uh, vegetables and uh, fruits. And uh, uh, as a parent, uh, they would like to feed uh, those children uh, with uh, uh, more and more healthy food. So actually uh, what he mentioned, uh, that, that is totally true in here. And Dennis, I believe, yeah. from what I've understood from other sessions, that having a, a uniform, homogeneous climate and environment, that the plants are, are cared for better. They feel more at home. Yep. They're not as stressed. Yeah. Is that I, about right? You're completely right. What you understood from the sessions is stress is one of the, let's say, topics that is using the plant, uh, let's say, is using more water. Uh, there is more, uh, let's say, um, um, what was it, uh, pardon, um, that the, the transpiring of the plant is more when there is stress. So that means he needs to absorb more water. So in case of there is a homogeneous climate, the, the, the plant feels fine, okay. So the use of water is, is, is limited. And nutrients as well? I, I uh, yeah, it's a combination. Eh? Yeah. What, is, what you give to the plant is nutrients to, uh, together with water. So if the uh, total assumption of the, the consumption of water is okay, then the, the, the nutrients, what needs to be added, is also in, in control. So just like us humans, when we're stressed and we tend to eat a bit more and yep. uh, sweat yep. a bit more yep. and maybe drink a bit more, I, I, perhaps water, maybe not, then yeah. uh, it's the same for a plant, basically. Yeah, and what I sometimes try to explain to, let's say, people we are not familiar with our systems, with the greenhouse industry, is like a plant is more or less the same in behavior as a human being. Yeah, if we are in a comfortable situation, we operate okay. So the plant, uh, vegetable, if it's tomato or pepper or whatever, is, the, is in the same situation. Understood. Now we have the opportunity for you at home to ask some questions to uh, Dennis and to Yuki, uh, maybe about the Asian market, maybe about greenhouses in general. So I just wanted to remind you to use your web browser and send your questions here into the studio. We'll come to those in, in just a second. Um, what else can you tell me about the semi-closed uh, greenhouse, yeah. which I believe Kubo invented? 
Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we invented uh, more than uh, 14 years, uh, 14 years ago, uh, together with uh, uh, an, a grower who was uh, familiar to, to the Kubo, who has already normal uh, traditional Venlo greenhouses. Uh, it was uh, developed for um, California for the, the area of Santa, Santa Barbara, Santa Maria, uh, where there is a problem with um, the wind changing, uh, white flies, and he was looking for a possibility to have uh, no insect nettings as less as possible, because that makes shade. And he wants to be in control for rising temperatures and uh, the humidity levels. So you know, step by step, we developed the system, uh, Ultra Clima, and that is now uh, adapted in the Japanese market, but in other regions in Asia, where we produce flowers, vegetables, with, uh, let's say, um, uh, control of the environment with overpressure. That means that, uh, now what you already said, homogeneous climate from side gable to side gable, end gable to end gable. Um, the consumption of uh, heat is limited because you're in control, there is no spoil. Uh, same with water, etc. So, yeah, the total concept is to be in control as much as possible. Understood. Yuki, uh, the semi-closed mm -hmm. greenhouse, um, how much mm -hmm. of that uh, is in demand in, uh, in Japan? Is that something which is a hot topic? Uh, and how much of the yeah, projects that you're working on are with semi-closed? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, actually, uh, the semi-closed technology is uh, becoming more and more uh, a hot topic in Japan. Uh, this is uh, due to the fact uh, that we have uh, severe uh, challenges uh, in the summer period uh, where we have a hot and uh, humid uh, climate uh, uh, almost over Japan. And uh, with uh, the help of uh, introduction uh, of Kubo uh, Ultra Clima semi-closed technology, uh, we have been able to uh, tackle uh, the serious uh, hu humidity and temperature uh, uh, challenges uh, in the night uh, times. And uh, we were able to overcome those situations. And I believe that we have uh, done uh, three projects uh, currently over in Japan. And we are looking forward to build uh, more projects over here. So that's a technology which you assume is going to have greater demand moving forward. Yes, uh, due to uh, our uh, experiences, uh, more and more uh, uh, customers, uh, clients, uh, they are interested in uh, uh, the growth in this way. Okay. So we have a question uh, from Joyce Raskin. Good morning. Can you give an estimation of the shares of outdoor, greenhouse, indoor, and vertical farming for Japan and Asia in total, I'm going to come to Dennis first, and Yuki, if you could think about it from a Japanese perspective. So how much is outdoor, how much is greenhouse, how much is indoor vertical farming? Um, give us a flavor, maybe not only for Asia, but for the world, if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know covered in the world is only 8%. So 8% of all the, the, the production facilities in the world is 8%. So a greenhouse or indoor farming would yeah, be 8% yeah. in total. 92% yeah. is outdoor, Still outdoor open farming. field yeah, farming. Open field farming. For, for vegetables. Uh, um, what do you include? In, meats, I think that is average. average. I cannot really say the difference between flowers or vegetables much yeah, in but, general. But not grain, for example. No, no, no. no, no. So things that you could grow in yeah. a greenhouse or an indoor environment, yeah. actually 92% of it is still, still grown outdoors. Yeah, correct. Okay. So there's a lot to win for the market. Yeah. Um, I think that if we look to, let's say, uh, Japan, Korea, um, it's, let's say, the same. Uh, if we look to some uh, new merging markets, uh, it is even uh, the, what is undercovered by plastic is even less compared yeah. to uh, the open field. And the Netherlands, any idea? Is it a bit higher here, I assume? Um, ooh, good question. Okay, think about it. We'll ask, <laughs> we'll ask, we'll ask Yuki. Uh, is that the situation in Japan? About 8% maybe is, uh, in, is indoor? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not fully aware of the, those figures, no, but I right. assume, uh, 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 say generally speaking, uh, the idea is uh, uh, correct. Yep. So around, uh, I think, 10% uh, is only covered uh, with uh, like greenhouse, uh, including plastic and a tunnel greenhouse, not high tech. Yep. And out of those uh, uh, greenhouses, I thought it was uh, around 2 or 3% uh, were uh, glass uh, greenhouse. 
and that yeah. even out of those uh, two or three percent, uh, it is climate controlled. Understood. And uh, if you compare, uh, you say, uh, the use of pesticides and uh, fertilizers uh, for open field uh, versus the greenhouse, and moreover. Uh, to climate-controlled greenhouses, uh, that is uh, uh, unbelievable. Thank you. Another question to you, Yuki, from Sylvia Tsu. Good morning. What are the key differences and similarities in greenhouse design in Japan compared to the rest of the world? So what are very specific things you address in Japan for greenhouse mm -hmm. needs, and what is Kubo doing to, uh, to, to address those? Yes, uh, like uh, we have been discussing, uh, uh, the advantage uh, of uh, greenhouse growing uh, with uh, climate control is that uh, uh, even though that in Japan we have uh, several uh, different uh, weather conditions uh, because we are stretched from uh, south to uh, north, uh, in uh, how do you say a long uh, distance, but uh, the demands uh, for those cities uh, from south to north or north to south uh, that is uh, pretty much the same and to produce uh, what is necessary in the market uh, with a stable uh, production using uh, less energy or less uh, pesticides. Uh, greenhouse, uh, especially uh, the semi-closed system, which can overcome uh, the summer uh, uh, hot and humidity yeah. uh, situation, is uh, an advantage uh, that is, uh, yeah. So, case, Dennis, yeah. how does a greenhouse in the Netherlands compare to a greenhouse in Japan? Is it just plug and play? No, no, no. It is not plug and play. Uh, especially in what we see in Japan is the uh, it is in the the region of fire, what we call it, with the earthquakes and typhoons. So for sure, we have to take that in consideration that the design uh, is is some different, stronger uh, to to cover uh, those uh, characteristics of uh, yeah the, what is needed. Understood. Yuki, to you, another question <laughs> from uh, Henk van Toil. Um, <laughs> as far I know you know him. <laughs> as far as I know, the average age of farmers is quite high in Japan. There's a lack of mm -hmm. younger successes. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about talent a lot here and, and attracting people mm -hmm. to the industry. Mm -hmm. Does modern mm -hmm. greenhouse technology, is it able to impact mm -hmm. this situation? I think Henk already knows the answer. It might be a rhetorical question. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the answer is yes, actually. And uh, the agricultural workers, uh, including uh, open field uh, workers, uh, I understood uh, from the, uh, uh, the st statistics that uh, the average age of the workers is actually it was more than uh, 65 years old. And uh, our uh, challenge is, uh, is to uh, say, uh, uh, have more younger people involved in a successful uh, greenhouse business, which uh, a, a greenhouse, uh, especially a semi-closed greenhouse, uh, can uh, attract people. Yeah. And that's similar all over the world, I guess, Dennis. Yeah, and I think what is also an advantage for our system is the, the more production you can gain with our system, in compare with that, uh, the yeah, the age of the growers in Japan, but also in Korea or in China, you see, yeah, their labor is, is let's say m less in control, and so if there's a higher production, the gap is filled by the system. Yeah. Uh, so basically, productivity per square man, meter. woman, hour, yeah. Yeah. as well as per square meter, yeah. is is a lot higher, yeah. and in areas where labor is very expensive. Uh, it's of course it's important. even more important, yeah, correct. but also attracting people into the industry to, uh, to do that. Wonderful. So in a nutshell, uh, when it comes to uh, the Asian spotlight and to what's going on, um, you know, greenhouses, especially the semi-closed ones are advantageous and in, in great demand. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you say the future is blue. Yeah, that's correct. The future <laughs> is blue. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening, Yuki and Dennis. Thank you to thank hear. You to you here in the studio. Thank you. Andrew. All the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you.